Hi, my name is Alicia and I'm a women's health physical therapist working here at Breakthrough PT in Sunnyvale, California. Today I'm going to be discussing urinary continence in the postpartum phase after delivery. There are three types of common diagnoses for incontinence. The first is what's called stressed urinary incontinence and it's any involuntary loss of urine, small or large amount, that occurs with a physical stress. And that could be something as simple as coughing, sneezing, or laughing, or even something more vigorous as exercise or running. The second type of incontinence is known as urge incontinence. This is a strong urge to void or urinate that is often associated with triggers such as running water or pulling into your driveway and can result in any type of loss of continence. And the last type of incontinence is called mixed incontinence, and it's a combination of both. So you might be experiencing small amounts of urinary leakage due to urge or stress. A common exercise used to treat urinary incontinence is a pelvic floor exercise. So let's take a look at the pelvic floor muscles. In looking at the spine, this is the bony anatomy. We have our hip girdle here and two hip bones. Just inferior to this ring of the hip bones would sit your pelvic floor muscles. These are the muscles that we would focus on in strengthening up the pelvic floor to prevent any urinary leakage. What we'll do now is we'll take a look at how to isolate or engage these muscles when looking to strengthen up the pelvic floor. Now we're going to practice how to turn on your pelvic floor or perform what's commonly referred to as a Kegel. Karen here is going to be our model and I'm going to talk to her as if I would educate a patient. So again, what you should be thinking about is these pelvic floor muscles. They function like a hammock and they hold everything in. Our internal organs, our bladder sits right on top, and they function with the diaphragm. The diaphragm is the muscle right about here that we use to take a nice deep breath and it passively relaxes on the exhale. As we take a deep breath, our pelvic floor should expand downward. We're increasing some pressure in our abdominal cavities and this is the action that would happen. Diaphragm up, pelvic floor down. As we exhale, that pelvic floor should scoop up and in. So that is a great thing to think of when performing a pelvic floor contraction. What you're gonna try and do now, Karen, is take a nice deep belly breath, expanding the rib cage, letting the pelvic floor relax. And as you exhale, you're going to try and draw the pelvic floor up and in towards you. Only think about holding it a second. Try, don't try and hold it for long periods of time. Just really think about isolating those muscles. So again, inhale, relax the pelvic floor. Exhale, pull the pelvic floor up and in. Some things you wanna consider here in order to ensure that you are isolating your pelvic floor are making sure that one, you are not holding your breath. This is common compensation when the pelvic floor feels weak. We draw in like this. Make sure that you are pulling in that pelvic floor while you are exhaling. Another thing to think about is performing them in a nice relaxed position, not right away in standing because then we're working against gravity, and making sure that your glute muscles are not kicking in to help you pull that pelvic floor in. It's a very small contraction because we're talking about very small muscle groups. Other common diagnoses frequently treated by pelvic floor physical therapists might include pelvic pain, painful sex, and constipation. If you're having any women's health issues, consider consulting a pelvic floor physical therapist.